I don't know. All right. So we talked now all about the heart. You know, all the details about the heart anatomy. And you know, actually, something about the blood vessels, because we talked a little bit about arteries and veins. Let's talk about the blood itself. Okay, so what is blood? So, you know, you, it's not just a red liquid. Blood is actually a mixture of several different things. Okay? There's a liquid part of the blood, and then there's a bunch of things within that liquid. Okay. So, No. All right, here we go. We're back. So blood consists of two things. The plasma, which is the liquid portion of the blood, and then a bunch of different types of cells. So plasma is most of our blood. About 55% of our blood is made of this liquid. And in that liquid is where nutrients are dissolved. Vitamins, minerals, glucose, things like that. Of that plasma, sort of you imagine the plasma is kind of a, a stream of liquid. In that sweet stream, suspended, floating in it, are a bunch of different things. There's red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. And we'll talk about each of those. So, the red blood cells, we often abbreviate RBC. Red blood cells. And they are shaped like these discs. They're kind of like um, a bagel shape. They're circular. They have little indentation in them. But they don't, they do not have a hole in the middle. So they're just sort of indented there. And the purpose of red blood cells is to carry oxygen. So the red blood cells have a special molecule in them. It's called hemoglobin. And hemoglobin is a protein that has iron in it. And that iron binds to oxygen, and that's how our red blood cells can carry oxygen. It's also why we need protein in our diet. because hemoglobin in our blood cells is made with, pro with iron. If a person is iron deficient, they don't get enough iron in their diet, they may get what we call anemia. It means their blood cells are not carrying enough oxygen, and they may be tired and fatigued all the time with very low energy, because their blood cells aren't providing the oxygen to their cells that they, they need. So that's one of the things found in our blood. We have a plasma, which carries red blood cells. It also carries white blood cells. Now what do they do? Yeah, they are our body's immune system. Okay. They defend against what we call pathogens. Organisms that could cause disease. There's one white blood cell. There's many different types of white blood cells, actually, that have different functions. We're not going to get into the details about all the types of white blood cells. When you're sick, if you have, say, uh, an ear infection, 
your body will produce more white blood cells to help fight off that infection. Your immune system and your white blood cells also produce antibodies, which protect you from a future infection from that disease. And then the third part of our blood, besides the plasma, are the platelets. Platelets allow our blood to clot, to clump up, to stick together. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Both. Good thing. Right, why do you say both? I don't know. You're correct. Just a guess. So it is good in certain situations and bad in others. When would it be good that your blood is clotted? Mm -hmm. Talia? Yeah, cut. When you have a cut. So if you got a cut on your finger, it's going to bleed. But where that cut happened, these platelets start to clump together and seal up that wound so that you stop bleeding. So that's good. Those clots stop you from bleeding. When is a blood clot a bad thing? Side of your blood vessels, a clot forms when it shouldn't. It can float around through your arteries and through your veins, and eventually it can get stuck somewhere and block the flow of blood to that part. So if you had a blood clot somewhere in your circulatory system and it got caught in an artery leading to your heart and clogged it, well then you might have a heart attack because blood can't get to your heart. If that blood clot settled somewhere in your brain, okay, it can lead to a lack of flow of blood to your brain and cause a stroke. So when blood clots form in the wrong place at the wrong time, it's not a good thing. So we do need platelets in our body because they stop us from bleeding in terms of an in injury. If you take a sample of blood, so obviously if you get a cut or something, you're bleeding, it just looks like red liquid. But if you take that blood and you centrifuge it, centrifuge is when you put blood in these little containers, and it spins it around very, very fast, thousands of times per second. Okay? What happens is all the parts of the blood separate okay, like this. Okay? And what is this part on top? Plasma. The plasma. What is this? No, down here? Those are the red blood cells. Okay? White blood cells would be in the boundary between them, but there's not very many in these examples. And so, you see, most of the blood is plasma, about 55%. Red blood cells are 45%, and then white blood cells plates are only a tiny percentage. Okay? Now, if you look at these, do you notice any difference between them? What's the difference between these blood samples? I'm only Um, I don't know, do they? Yeah. Maybe there are. That's not the thing I was looking for, though, right? Um, two of them are kind of like, it looks like they're more thick, and the other one, and two other ones are kind of like clearer. Yeah, these are cloudier. Do you know what that might mean about where this blood came from? What might they be testing if you go, probably not you guys, but maybe your parents, and they have to go to the doctor, they take a blood sample. What's one of the things they might look for in that blood? Okay, it's related to clogged arteries. What could cause clogged arteries? Something maybe your parents, your grandparents have to watch the amount of something they want. I know it. No? Something in their diet. Cholesterol. Cholesterol is a byproduct of animal products. So cholesterol is only found in animal products. It's a fatty substance that builds up in the plasma and can start to clog up arteries and veins. 
This blood comes from a person with very high cholesterol level. There's a lot of fat in the plasma, a lot of cholesterol. This is somebody also with high cholesterol, but not as high as this. This is somebody with like a borderline, slightly higher cholesterol, and this is a person with normal cholesterol level. Okay? Normal is like below 150 um, milligrams. Okay? This is somebody with 500 milligrams. So this is really, really high cholesterol. Um, so that's what's in the blood. Um, just a little video clip from a movie. Maybe you've seen. Anybody know the movie before seeing that? Matrix. Oh, what happened to our movie? No. 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 Audio so messed up. Why can't I not change the? I know, I know. Wait, 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 wait. More rain? No, that was the other movie. That was just. No, no, no. Sit down. No, do not. Ish. Sit your ass down. that guy? Who? Who's this guy? What's his superpower? Magneto. What did he do? So what did he do? He took all the, sucked all the iron, which is magnetic, out of that guy's blood, and that's what he used to make those little balls that he sent flying through the glass. Can I get my food for guessing? No. All right, let's talk a little bit about these blood vessels, then we'll be done for today. All right, so. If you were able to take out all of your arteries and veins and capillaries and stretch them in a line, okay, it would be over 60,000 miles. Because okay? they're all very, very tiny. All your body, basically, tissue is surrounded by these blood vessels. So they're really, really small. Okay? Um, and so most of those are what we call capillaries. Okay? But arteries, as we talked about, they carry the blood away from your heart. If you remember, A arteries away. Arteries usually carry oxygenated blood, but not the pulmonary artery. That carries the oxygen. Because where is it carrying the blood to? The lungs. Sending it to the lungs, so it's not oxygen. And arteries are very strong, 
they're elastic or stretchy. Okay. And as they leave our heart, they're really wide and thick. But as they branch off to go to different parts of our body, they start to get narrower and narrower. No, 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 no. Now on the inside, they should be nice and smooth. So blood can flow through them very easily. side of your neck, like right on the side, your right hand, across your left side of your neck, slide towards your throat, and then when you get like halfway there, there's this indentation, right? That's where your jawline is. That is your feeling, your carotid artery. And in that carotid artery, that's carrying blood from your heart up to the left side of your heart, of your brain. You got to push in there, there's an indentation right next to your trachea. And you can feel your pulse there. You can feel your pulse there because every time your heart beats, it forces blood into your arteries and they expand a little bit. And when you feel your pulse, that's what you're feeling. You're touching where an artery is. So every time it swells when your heart beats, you can feel it. So your pulse rate tells you your heart rate. So arteries branch, leave your heart, go to all the various parts of your body. They branch off. They get smaller and smaller and smaller until they're really, really small. We call them capillaries once they get that small. Capillaries are so small, they are only one cell thick. And blood cells have to go through single file. That's how narrow they are. And the capillaries are where things move into and out of our blood, where material can diffuse. Basically, all of your body tissue is surrounded by this network of capillaries. Only one red blood cell at a time can fit through them. So here in this diagram, what we have are blood cells moving through a capillary. Again, single file. And along the way, this is where they can give up their oxygen, where they can take in waste and carbon dioxide from the cells around them. Once these blood cells have given up their oxygen, where do they need to go? Go to the heart. Back to the heart. How do they get there? veins. Arteries become capillaries, capillaries become veins. The veins bring that blood back to the heart. Now veins are different from arteries. They're not as thick, they're not as strong, because they don't have to withstand very much pressure. Your arteries need to withstand a lot of pressure because every time your heart beats, it forces a lot of blood into the arteries. By the time that blood gets to the veins, the pressure is much lower. Most veins carry deoxygenated blood back to the heart. The only exception is what one? The pulmonary. Pulmonary, because that's carrying oxygen. The other interesting thing about veins is they have valves in them, little one-way doors that only allow the blood to flow in the proper direction back to the heart. Now your arteries don't need valves because there's high pressure forcing the blood forward. But the veins, there's lower pressure, so they need these valves. 
Does anybody know what varicose veins are, or spider veins? Yeah. That people get in like their legs especially. They're like swollen often, like bluish, greenish veins that bulge out of a person's. Oh, yeah. That's, those, vein, those are veins and what happens is the valves have not, are not working properly. So instead of forcing the blood to go in one direction, they don't work and the blood can kind of start to pool and settle in that area and they swell up really bad. Okay. So that's what happens. Uh, let me go over here. Oh, no. right. Hold on. One more slide. I, we're not done. All right, last slide, this one. So, this is an important one, too. This exact diagram will be on your quiz. So, what we have here is a capillary. Blood is coming in from the heart, going here. This is the capillary. So what type of, if blood's going this direction, what type of blood vessel is this? Is it an artery or a vein? I hear some of both. Blood is going this way. This is the heart, blood's flowing this way. It's an artery. It's carrying the blood away from the heart. What's this going to be? That's a vein. What's this part in between? A capillary. So the blood cells, once they get in the capillary, they have to move single file. That's how narrow it is. All right. These look like fried eggs here. These represent cells of your body. They might be cells in your brain, for example. What is number four pointing to? What is this, these circles? That's the blood. What type of blood? Part of the blood. Those are red blood cells. Number five is this space that's around the cells. It's not just like air. We have fluid that surrounds all of our cells. It's called lymph. All right. So what substance is number six represent? It's something that's moving from a red blood cell going into a brain cell. Oxygen. That would be oxygen. That's what our red blood cells carry oxygen, and they give it to our body cells. What is, what is this space? Are these red blood cells just in air? No. What do they carry in? Part of the blood? Carbon dioxide? Plasma. Eight. This is something that's moving. It's going from our plasma into our brain cells. So it's not oxygen, because we already have oxygen goes from the red blood cell into our cells. What would be in the plasma that goes to all of our cells? Carbon dioxide? No, because it wouldn't send it into our body cells. What's in our plasma? Oh, iron? Could be. Nutrients. Nutrients. Glucose or vitamins, minerals, other than oxygen. The oxygen is carried in the red blood cell. What would this be? This is something that's going from our brain cell into our blood. That's waste products. That's carbon dioxide. You can call it waste.
Yeah, you're going to be missing school, is that what you're saying? 